So we finally got around to testing Intel's B580, and let's just say, it defied our expectations and not in the best way. Roughly six months into this little guy's existence, we wanted to find out, is Intel doing well with this GPU thing? Is the B580 worth it this far into the game and how does it perform with older hardware. We got the Intel limited edition reference card and we'll be comparing it to the best value cards around the same price point we could find from both Nvidia and AMD, those being the RTX 3070 and RX 6650 XT. Before getting into the numbers, just a few things. The 3070 we used is the Founders Edition and the 6650 XT is the XFX Swift 210. These tests were done with an Intel Core Ultra 9285K and while we normally test 20 games for these comparisons, we're only using 18 of them this time around as the 3070 was unable to run Indiana Jones at higher settings due to claimed VRAM constraints. But at the same time, the 6650 XT at eight gigabytes was able to run it fine, although at a very low FPS. And Halo Infinite has dropped support entirely for Intel GPUs. It just straight up does not run at all on the B580 anymore. Also, we had a weird issue with GTA 5 Enhanced Edition where it wouldn't connect to Rockstar's game server sometimes, which meant we had to reinstall the Rockstar our launcher multiple times to get all the tests done. Plus, there were some mild driver issues with the B580 on our main testing PC, but uninstalling with DDU and reinstalling took care of it. This definitely isn't foreshadowing anything later on. And another thing to keep in mind is that both the graphics software and the drivers are still in their beginning stages. So don't expect all the bells and whistles Nvidia and AMD have like screen capture and audio filtering. Now, for the numbers, starting with the price, the B580 was at $250. MSRP. But now to get a new one, unless you can snipe an MSRP card from Best Buy or Micro Center, you're looking at $320 to $420, which I was shocked. Best Buy sells the B580, never knew that. And used aren't any cheaper on eBay. Although you may be able to get lucky buying in person locally. The 3070 had an MSRP of $500 back in 2020 and is currently sitting at three to $400 refurbished on eBay. And you can even get them for as low as $260 used. The 6650 XT is not as widely available and costs about $350 refurbished or more realistically $220 to $250 used with some going as low as a 184 bucks. Now, when we did all the testing for this video, the RX 9060 XT was being anticipated to cost a little bit more than AMD announced it at the 299 price point. We may have to revisit this video a little later on once the RX 9060 XT drops. However, Based on the fact that the 6650 XT and the RTX 3070 are priced where they are on the used market, I don't potentially see AMD really actually selling their cards for the prices that they quoted at MSRP. I could be proven wrong and we'll do a follow-up video once that card drops, but uh, for now, this is how we have it. So we ran three synthetic benchmarks, 3D Mark Steel Nomad, Steel Nomad Lite, and Passmark. In Steel Nomad, the B580 got a score of 2975, the 6650 XT got 1831, which is the 38% drop, and the 3070 just barely won with 3,057 points, a 3% bump over the B580. As for the light version, the B580 got 11091, the 6650 XT was 20% lower, and the 3070 had a much larger win at 18% higher. In Passmark, the B580 struggled with a 3D score of only 18,567 compared to the 6650 XT's 14% better 21,000 score, and the 3070 got 40% better than the B580 to hit 27,000 points. But as we know, synthetic performance doesn't always translate to gaming. The only reason we do it is just so we could have a bevy of benchmarks that we can compare as time goes on. So let's get into the actual game. In the 18 games we were able to test, we ran four sets of settings. 4K Ultra with mainly quality upscaling. There are a few native tests mixed in as not all the games support upscaling. There's 1440 Ultra native, 1440 Ultra with quality upscaling, and 1080 Ultra native. Note that all of these have some ray tracing mixed in as well. For 4K, the B580 got an average of 50 FPS. The 6650 XT got 39 FPS, which is a 23% 
drop, and the 3070 got 61 FPS, or 21% higher than the B580. In 1440 native, the B580 got a more comfortable 65 FPS, the 6650 XT dropped 24% to hit 49 FPS, and the 3070 gained 15% over the B580 to hit 74 FPS. Now with upscaling, the B580 hit 90 FPS, the 6650 XT was 75 FPS, which is a 17% drop, and the 3070 was 101, making it 11% better than the B580. And then for 1080, the B580 got 92, the 6650 XT got 75, which is an 18% decrease, and the 3070 got 101, which is 10% better than the B580. And finally, the total combined averages come out to 59 FPS for the 6650 XT, 74 FPS for a plus 25 difference for the B580, and 84 FPS for the 3070, a 13% gain over that B580. Using these numbers, of all the testing, we get a dollar per frame cost of $3.36 at MSRP, or $4.32 straight price for the B580. 6650 XT costs $6.73 MSRP, or $3.88 straight pricing, and the 3070 is $5.95 MSRP, or $3.58 straight pricing. Now, regarding 1% and 0.1% lows, for those of you who aren't familiar, the closer the lows are to the average FPS, typically the better. And the bigger the difference is from the average FPS, you'll get more stutters and less consistent of an overall experience. And the B580 really struggled with an average of 39 FPS at 1% lows and 18% FPS at 0.1% lows, as opposed to the 6650 XT, which had 38 FPS for the 1% lows and 29 for the 0.1% lows. And the 3070 was better still for 53 FPS with the 1% lows and 36 for the 0.1%. And although the 3070 is the better performing card overall, especially in more intensive loads, including ray tracing, the gap isn't as big at 1080p only 10% better, which is where it matters most as that's most likely what you'll play at. And though the averages may not demonstrate it, in six of the 18 games, the B580 matches the 3070's performance or even slightly beats it. The B580's uh, Founders Edition Limited Edition also runs cooler at 55 to 60 degrees Celsius and takes a good bit less power at 140 watts than the 3070 65 to 75 degrees Celsius and 190 watt power draw. So it's more forgiving to anyone upgrading an older system who may not have as big of a power supply, but we'll get into more of the older system upgrade info in a minute. The 6650 XT is lackluster in all of this. Having that average negative 20% performance of the B580 and using the same amount of power at 140 watts and with our card running hotter at 65 to 75 degrees Celsius. It's pretty clear that these are going to be mainly 1080p cards with 1440 capability in some titles or with upscaling. And while the B580 is a bit behind the 3070, performance, it does still have three main things going for it. One, the B580 is currently less than a year old compared to the four and a half year old 3070. So it should be longer before it runs out of support. But then again, specific game support for it might just end like we saw with Halo Infinite during our testing. Two, the B580 is currently still being produced. So you can get one new for as low as $320, meaning you don't have to worry about not having a manufacturer's warranty or the many other risks of buying used, such as how the card was used, mining, gaming, overclocking, general environment, care with pets, smoking, scams, etc. And then number three, it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM instead of eight gigabytes, which is becoming an issue in newer games at ultra settings. But most of the time, you'll run into a performance issue of being able to run those highest settings before VRAM stops you. A notable exception is Indiana Jones, where the 3070 will not run at ultra settings, whereas the B580 can run at 1440p ultra native at 59 FPS or 1080p at 72 FPS. Now, we did want to address a major common concern with the B580, the overhead on this card and it being bogged down by an older CPU. We put it in an AM4 build with a Ryzen 5 2600. And while we expected it to not perform as well, what we actually got was a slew of graphics 
text issues. Keep in mind, I can't exactly say how universal of an experience this is, but when we booted it up with a fresh install of Windows, everything was fine until we installed the graphics drivers. After that, the screen immediately started flickering and going black for around two to 15 seconds at a time. It wouldn't let us turn up the refresh rate to match the monitor, and sometimes it wouldn't display out at all, and we had to do multiple restarts. It was actually a nightmare. After a day plus of headaches and troubleshooting, we were able to get it working for a time, but not at all consistently. During which we did test a few games, getting anywhere from the same results as we did with the 285K all the way to losing 50% of its performance. We ended up switching to a Ryzen 3600, which still had a couple bugs, mainly on startup, but was infinitely more manageable and consistent, which allowed us to get even more numbers to throw out your face. In 3D Mark's test, it lost less than 1% of performance. However, in Passmark, the 3D score took a massive 33% hit. But for actual gaming performance, it went from 50 FPS down to 45 in 4K, losing 11% of its frames. 1440p native went from 65 down to 55, which is a loss of 15%. 1440p with upscaling got down to 66 FPS from 90, which is a 27% drop. And finally, in 1080p native, performance went from 92 FPS to 66, a 28% difference. Keep in mind, your experience will vary as these are averages and performance highly depends on the game. As at 1080p, performance was anywhere from 10% better in F124 down to 59% worse in Baldur's Gate 3. Suffice it to say, if you are rocking an older CPU, it's not gonna be as good. <laughs> it's just that simple. So to recap, the 3070 has an average of 13% better performance at right about the same cost or a little cheaper, albeit it won't be new. The B580 beats the 6650 XT by an average of 25%, but has 31% worse 0.1% lows. That, that's a lot of percentages, but hopefully you understand. The B580's graphics drivers definitely have issues, especially in older systems, but we can hope they get better as more updates come out. That's what happened with the Alchemist cards at least, and it has been slowly trickling out with things like the lunar like handhelds they've been updating battle mage in that regard and upgrading an older pc is a real toss-up but not a bad option depending on the games you play and if you're willing to sacrifice your time and previously migraine free brain to the troubleshooting gods if your pc qualifies for a windows 11 upgrade you're probably in the clear i'd highly recommend you be on something like a ryzen 5 5600 before you even consider being on the intel graphics card at this point so overall at the 250 $50 MSRP, this could be a good buy if you're experienced with PCs. But with affordable B580s being almost constantly sold out, you're more realistically spending $320 to $400. And that's a lot harder to justify when the 3070 is such a good value right now. And we also don't know how the 9060 XT is going to hit the market. But as shown, the B580 does beat the 6650 XT by a good margin. So if you're looking to get away from Nvidia on a budget, this could be the one to go for, or again, until AMD drops the 9060 XT, which again, I don't think is gonna cost the MSRP that they're saying. And so more than likely the 9060 is gonna be the $300 card, but maybe I'll eat my words and uh, we'll do a follow-up.